is my honor to stand up here in front of so many talented individuals who helped bring this project to life. But before we get started, we do have a giveaway we're all going to do. So if you arrived at the premiere, you were asked to whatever she said to do. I have no idea. But to do a giveaway that is something significant to the film. So I would like to introduce to you someone who really went above and beyond to bring this project to life. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'll actually ask this as an extra step, if you can stand up and give a round of applause to the award-winning actress, Marin Decker. Yeah. Gray, oh my gosh, how excited are we for tonight? <laughs> yeah. This is so awesome. Hi guys. Well, um, I'm Marin. <laughs> um, and on behalf of the production team, I am overjoyed to welcome all of you to the world premiere of Light of the Passing Train. I know that there are lots of things you could choose to be doing on a Friday night at 5 p.m., but we are so grateful that you chose to spend your time with us. This film has been over two years in the making and features HPU student talents that were all deeply passionate about bringing this story to life. So I'm going to try and keep my try my best to keep this short because I know we have giveaways. Um, but before we begin, I have some very special thank yous and shout outs to just some of the incredible people that made this film possible. Production team: Gray Rich, Danny Hockett, Andrew Mack, Nick Lindenstruth, Jack O'Donnell, Zia Hirschberg, and Kira Pardue. Cast. Andrew Andy McNichol, Sophia Shu Shulak, Nate Bryant, and David Kleinschuster. Extras Sophia Chena, Ray O'Reilly, Julian Sardo, yes. Molly Dewey, <laughs> Josiah Turner, Joey Lucente, Danny Hockett, and Boaz Lawfrey. A special fan shout out to my dear friend, Laura Fallant, my darling friend from Germany who helped support and promote this film halfway across the world. And event assistants. Connor Harris, who did the marquee lights and the gorgeous posters you see outside. Arthur Fade for our red carpet. Dylan Denning with OSL for including us in the official HPU student life calendar. Tara Thurman in HPU Viewpoint News. Reagan Smith for interviews on our press and media day. Charcoal Pony Improv for promoting and helping market this amazing film. Yes. Write it. <laughs> Ray O'Reilly for concessions. Danny Hockett, Brendan Shore, and CJ Jones for photography. And Dr. Nito Pobain for his personal shout out mention during Family Weekend Spring 2024. Okay, we're at time for giveaways now. <laughs> Sorry guys, that was really long. <laughs> One second. All right, we have our winners. Um, can I have the journals? Yeah. Uh, okay, so first off, I want to explain what these journals are. So in the film, we have an exact replica of one of these gorgeous red and gold embroidered journals that is very significant to the film. And just thought they were super pretty. Wanted a couple of you guys that came out in support to be able to take one home. So congratulations to Rhea Riley. <laughs> and our second winner of the night is Angelina Antonucci. Congratulations, Rhea and Angelina. All right, so that's all for me. I'm now going to turn it back to our visionary and award-winning director of Light of the Passing Train, the visionary behind who made this project possible, Gray Rich. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor, and I appreciate that very much. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we have about seven-ish minutes until this movie starts. We're doing this through a live stream. It took 
many, many tries to try and get the live stream right because every time I felt like I had it right, I would watch it here and then there's something I'd want to go back and change. So that's so life of filmmaking for you guys. So there's a lot of people I really want to shout out personally. Um, if you can stand up when I call your name, that would be awesome. Is Tina Skinner here? Yeah. Tina Skinner, can you stand up, please? That is my lovely mom. She's been one of my biggest supporters since day one. Um, can Mary Elizabeth and Sean Rich please stand up? All right. Can Cameron King please stand up? And I have a very special shout out to give because they made it very possible to be here tonight. Can my somewhat brothers of Beta Theta Pi please stand up? So what's actually really fun is when I was actually going through a very difficult time in my life, um, Jake Sharp actually asked, when I was serving him at Prime, he said, come to the parties. Come tonight. And that was my first that was my first frat house experience. And Jake and all those guys pulled me up to the very top of the stage. And it was a very, very proud moment. So because that was, that was one of my first parties I've ever been to. So there's first for everything. Can Dr. Andrea Hunt please stand up? Woo! So why I'm giving this particular professor a special shout out is I took her summer class in leadership where she taught me a lot, and for those of you who did not know, I felt kind of guilty after this. I told her I had a big group project due for my other class, but, and I told her I would not be able to get this one assignment done, that I needed an extra day to get it done. In reality, I went to go see the new Transformers movie. <laughs> and then when I told Dr. Hunt, what really happened, she was very cool with it. She said, I love that movie. <laughs> I'm doing on time, four minutes, wow. Um, also, forgive me if I mess this up. Can Ashton K please stand up? <laughs> and I'm actually gonna do something as well. Um, can everyone in this room please stand up if you're able to? Hello, hello, it's working again. Okay. So, like Marin was saying earlier, this movie took two and a half years to get done. It took a lot of cast and crew. It took a lot of scheduling. There was some arguments back and forth. It, it really took a lot to bring this movie to the big screen, but I cannot be more proud. So, for anyone who is not cast and crew on this project, please give everyone standing who is cast and crew a big round of applause, please. They were <laughs> So we have about three. Oh, and there's also one more I want to give a shout out because she just walked in. Can Bella Caruso, everyone give Bella Caruso a big round of applause. And there's one more I do want to give a shout out in particular to. I already said she's done a lot for the movie, but she got a lot of this movie done. She worked with me through pre-production from the time I first pitched this to her literally a year ago. She got all the marketing done for this movie, and she basically helped see that this was a big group effort. So everyone, please give a round of applause for not only making this evening a fun night, but for making this movie a movie that will resonate with audiences. Everyone, please give a round of applause to Marin Decker. Alright guys, we're getting ready to get started, so if you can sit down, the movie will be starting very shortly. Feel free to keep talking.
So what y'all think? So before we wrap up, I'm actually gonna mute the credits. The song is called um ah, it's in the credits somewhere. Um, we got to borrow it. Um I'm gonna go ahead and bring the volume down. So I want to invite people one by one to accept their gift for all the hard work they did on this. And please stand up at the front. Will Andrew McNichol please stand to the front? For those of you who may not know, this is Andy's first time acting ever. He perfectly portrayed his love. A role like this, with the performance he gave, cannot go unappreciated. So, Andy, I think the audience can agree, you won Best Actor. <laughs> so, thank you, Andy. And next up, will Marin Decker please stand for yeah! played the role of Taylor Astor, and she, when she came onto the project, I actually have a funny story to tell you before we get going. Uh, so when I brought her on board, she read the script, she says, great, I love it, but college girls do not talk this way. <laughs> so she reworked the character, added everything that Taylor Astor is today in the movie, and I actually... I'm happy to say I think Marin should actually take the mic and say what the character is slightly based off of. Yeah, there's some, there's a few T Swift references if you didn't notice that was intentional. Um, also, just want to let y'all know I know that was a very heavy film. I'm happy to give anyone hugs that that needs it. I feel like I feel like I'm in need of a hug. So if you guys need hugs, just let me know. And Kim, Kim. Okay, maybe maybe Kim, maybe not him. We'll see. All right, back to Greg. So. This is Marin's second time acting, I believe. This is her second time acting. She, last year, she was in the pop capstone premiere of The Source, which is where I discovered her. Um, for her role in this movie, she is a two-time award-winning actress for her role in this movie. So I think it's very fair to say that Marin Decker wins Best Actress for this movie. Next up, will Shu, Shulak, please step up? In what is described as what many have described as the Regina George of this movie. She was perfect in her role and she came at the suggestion of Marin. Marin suggested her to play the role of Amber Whitlock. Uh, I still will always believe she's the Regina George of this movie. This is her second time acting as well. She starred alongside Merritt Decker in last year's The Source. And fun fact, all of her scenes where she cornered Andy were all improv <laughs> No script. No script. So for Best Supporting Actress, please take this show. All right, next up we have Nate. Yeah. I honestly got have no idea what to say. You're just Nate. You're just Nate. No, I'm just kidding. Nate came on. He was one of the first choices we had for the role of Austin Wyatt, uh, a character who was Roy's best friend, who was super obsessed with Taylor. <laughs> and he failed spectacularly. <laughs> so, this is Nate's first time acting, and I think it's very safe to, very giving to say that he is in the HPU's Charcoal Pony group, the Improv Club, so we're gonna give him a shout out. As is Shu, Shu's also in it as well, I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot. That's, please, don't, don't, don't kill me, please, Shu, please. So, for Best Supporting Actor, Nate Bryant. All right, next up we have David Kleinschuster. All right, 
So, fun fact about this, uh, some of this story in the film is slightly based off of some things that I went through, but I think I should go ahead and straight up forward, I have never once been accused of pushing someone in front of a moving train. I have to, I have to make that clear for legal reasons and liability issues, but this is David's second time acting. He was in last year's Fear of the Dawn. He also played, I just noticed this, you played two dead people. You played two dead people. You played two dead people. So, David, David actually helped David actually helped write some of the scenes in this movie, as did Marin. Um, David was one of the first people I talked to about bringing this project all those years ago, going all the way back to, I think it was, I first pitched it to him in November of 2021, was when I first pitched this to you. So, also for Best act, Supporting Actor, David Kleinschuster. There's more coming, there's more coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Light of the Past and Train. And there's going to be more people joining them on stage. Will Andrew Mack please step forward? Andrew Mack is our lovely cinematographer. He framed every single shot in this movie. He brought his expertise skills. This is, is this your first time working on a feature length DP project? No, I have had a couple more. Zia, I was the DP for her film, and I've had one or two others that I worked on. Well, I think it's very deserving for Andrew Mack to get Best Cinematography for this movie. All right, next up. Buddy, you know I'm going to say it. I need Nick freaking Linden's truth to step up here. And what he describes as the sexiest audio given to the God-given eardrum. <laughs> now, for his award, I tried reaching out to the company to see if they could put sexiest audio. They strictly declined. <laughs> because he always told me, buddy, the audio is going to be sexy. It's going to be beautiful. So, for his hard work on Light of the Passing Train, Nick Linden's Truth, you win Best Audio. And I have more. Very deserving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Flowers won her person. Hold on, I need to. I'm so glad I'm not allergies. <laughs> now, here's what I think we should do. They, I just told them what to do. They brought all the talent. So I'm actually going to sit over here and let's give everyone a big round Before everyone leaves, we're going to take a couple questions. Hold on, let me get the second mic. I need an assistant, if someone can come help me pass the other mic. Julian, it has to be you. Mr. Sarno. We will take, I think we'll take... We'll take about two or three questions. So who has a question they want to ask? The cast, crew, or even me? Who has a question? Um, Dr. Hunt, can you go give the... Julia, can you go give the mic to Dr. Hunt, please? Right here. Like it steps in. First, congratulations. Great job, everyone. Great job, great job. So this is a question for you, Gray, and a question for the cast. What motivated you to... Be a part of this film and to name it Light of the Passing Train. Oh, that's a really good question. You're really putting me on the spotlight there, Dr. Hunt. Right. I feel like this is I feel like this is payback for me dishing class to go see Transformers. I feel like this is probably <laughs> payback. Be careful what you ask for. Yes, yes. So what motivated me to tell this story? So 
I wanted people, especially people in our generation, I just learned this today actually. 130 people every day died by suicide. Every day. In this movie, since it started to it ended, at least five people have committed suicide. I made this film to bring that number to zero. That's, that's my goal with this movie. It's okay to not be okay. You're never alone. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So when I called it Light of the Passing Train, I, for one, I love trains. I grew up with them. I mean, it's become a part of my life. I always go and try and watch trains. I have a giant train table up in my house that has completely taken over the house. Thank you, Mary and Dad. Uh, it's going to be fun moving that out of the house when I get my job. But I feel like the train, when it leaves the station, in this movie, it, it represents like you're moving on from it. You have, to, you have to let that stuff go. Like whatever may be bothering you, you it's okay to get help. It's, it's okay to not be okay. And I feel like a lot of people truly forget that. And I just, with this film, I want it to kind of be a comforting blanket to people who might be struggling. So I'm gonna give it to David. Yeah, I remember when you first brought this to me two years ago, and this was just discussion. We were actually on the way to pick up another train. Um, so that's what we were doing in this time. But then it was just an idea. And it wasn't until the start of this academic year that he hit me up. And again, I had graduated from uh, the CBL last year, so I was home. But he called me, and he brought this idea up again. And he sent me a brief synopsis of the overview. I'm like, that's great. That means nothing without action. So what are we going to do? We're going to game plan. And I basically told it to him straight. I'm like, you got limited time here, man. All the resources are here. All the people, all the talent, all the incredible people who can make this impactful film are here. So what are you going to do about it? And he told me, I was like, you got to have discipline. He told me he spent two hours every single day writing. And after the first week, He's like, all right, I got a rough draft. I was like, no. And he was, what, about 18, 20 pages for that first rough draft. And I was like, oh, snap. I was just trying to throw something out there. And it caught. Um, so he took it control all the way and stepped up to the plate. And we got to grind on it from there. I'm like, all right, he's serious. We're going to put this together. And he brought the cast together, brought the beautiful people together that I think really the Lord really brought this together so that there was amazing opportunities. There's a lot of things that could have happened to cancel this film. But we're here. Gray's here. Foley's here. Come on, dog. Right, man. <laughs> but we're so thankful you're here. talk about what motivated us. So originally, I the first time I heard about this film, I was working out at my garage, and Greg gave me a call, and he sent me like a text a little bit about this film, and I was like, okay. Guy, oh, yeah. I had to get in shape for the role. Um, I, and you can see it on the biceps that I showed up, exactly, or my two layers of jackets. But I uh, originally, he, he, I, I talked about it, we bounced some stuff back and forth, I gave it a glance, and I, you know, I thought it was a great idea, but I, you know, didn't know where it was going. Because, I mean, I was just, I, was an, I felt like an outsider, I was just reading the script, and I was thankful he even showed me. And I thought it would be cool, I would have liked, you know, at the time I thought, oh, it would have been cool to be in this, I mean, I've never been in a short film. And I kind of didn't think about it for a long time. And then, sometime later, I was walking to the School of Communications, and all of a sudden, I see a bunch of people I know all lining up. I see, I see my friend Shu, I see Andrew, and I'm like, they're all talking, talking about like a, uh, uh, like some film thing. And one of the one of the people there goes, "You, you're the thing, right?" Like all angry and scary. And I said, "Yes, I am. What, 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 what what's up?" And so they got my attention, and all of a sudden I started talking. They said, "Oh, yeah, they're doing like a." Uh, a tryout thing upstairs for like a film. I was like, sure, why not? I go up there, never looked at the script once, and I went up there and auditioned. 
they were like, you're perfect for the role. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, wow, that was, I was, I, all I knew was I was talking about tacos. And I was like, they were like, you're perfect for the role. I was like, oh. And as I began to work with the team and I began to like talk with Gray a lot, I got to read the script, I kind of, I became more engaged, and that's what motivated me to really keep pouring in my all into working on this film. But it's just been a fun, it's been fun being along for the ride. Oh, thanks. Hi, I'm Shil. I don't know if you know that. Okay. Hi. What's up, baby? Um, okay, um, what a beautiful film. Let me see. So, Mary and I were having Aloe. Um, and she was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if you know this, but I want to be in like a little film project and you should try it. And I was like, I'm actually kind of super busy, not going to be an actress, not really feeling it. And she was like, you should just like read it, it could be cute, and we could like do a project together. And then, you know, like once someone says that, you're like, yeah, okay, we can't do it together. So I was like, give it a whirl, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And then she was like, oh, that's great. By the way, auditions are in like two weeks, so figure it out. So I did. Uh, I don't remember if I had a cold for this or not. I can't remember. I think that was the last one. I don't know. But I walked in. I'm going to be honest, when I walked in the audition, I totally played off nepotiz nepotism. Uh, I was like, I know Gray. So I was like, what's up? You know me. I know you. If I'm going to play nepotism, I'm going to do it right now. So nepotism. Uh, and he was like, yeah, sure. And the mayor was already in there. And I was like, oh, cool. Mary's here too. More nepotism. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Um, so what scene did I read? I don't know. I read some scene where I was being mean, uh, and I ignored the entire script. I, I'm gonna be honest, I think I held the script, and I was like, I'm not gonna curse, but I used a lot of profanity, uh, and then I was kind of angry, and then I like smiled at the end, and I was like, yeah, boom. So, how's your day going? And then like, that was pretty much it, and they were like, yeah, okay, dead silence. I'm gonna wrap it up. This is so long. Uh, yeah, and then in the end they were like, we knew it was going to be you. And I was like, nepotism works. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah. And then every time I came on set, Gray was like, you do you. Whatever feels right. We're going to make it work for you. And I was like, great. Because I'm an improvist at heart. And everything sounds more natural if I just say it from my soul. Especially my insults. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, thank you. I was going for Joker, but, you know, I couldn't. They, they weren't going to let me cut my face. So... You know, I just keep it tame. Yes, Heath Ledger, obviously. Best one. Anyway, that's what I did. I was mean, so thank you. You were way more than just mean, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she was amazing. Love her so much. Okay, guys. Hey, I'm Marin. Um, so what really drew me to this film is, like Gray mentioned earlier, he had approached me at the Capstone premiere last spring that me and Shu and David were all a part of. Um, and that's kind of when I first heard the pitch of the project, and then from there I read the first synopsis, and I was like, wow, this, this has the potential to be such an impactful story. I want to be a part of the team that helps bring this story to life. Um, I've, I'm very passionate about art and design. I'm a graphic design major. Um, I actually had the privilege of designing this little thing that you see up there on the screen, um, along with lots of different marketing materials. It's the poster. <laughs> You're very sweet. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> you guys are so kind. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I just really wanted to bring lots of different artistic aspects to this film and things that I'm very passionate about, whether that be art, acting, even some of the piano music that I got to do. Um, but from start to finish, this was an incredibly collaborative project. Like, this film would not exist without every single person that is in this room right now that is sitting here and supporting us, everyone that is standing here on stage, and all the many people who could not be here tonight but are still watching and still supporting from afar. Um, all of you all are very seen and very appreciated. So it was truly a team effort. And I think that collaborative spirit is truly what made me fall in love with this project of how much of a group effort it was. That it's like one, just like the message of the film, one person can't do it alone, one person can't make change alone, but we can do so much together. Be the light. <laughs> All right, um, first things first, I'd like to thank God. Yeah. You know what they say, all good things come from God. So I'd like to thank God. Um, acting is something I wanted to formally try for a while. And so this was October, and I'd like to give a shout out to Angelo Sassarini. Woo! 
Because he posted the flyer for auditions in a Discord server, and I was like, okay, cool, an opportunity. Um, and I told myself, okay, I need to make a decision quickly. And I know if I don't do this, I'm going to be wondering what happens if I did. So um, when I was making my decision, the final, for like better words, thing that helped me make that decision is I was talking with uh, my friend, who I'd also like to give a shout out to, Philip Alston. I don't know where you are in the audience, but. Andrew, up here. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and after speaking with you, I decided, yes, I'm going to do this. And so I signed up literally last second. Fun fact, I actually originally auditioned for Austin. And I ended up getting the part of Roy. And I was just so thrilled by that. And especially knowing now like how big of a project this was, how much everyone put into it, what all this project can do. I'm truly honored to be a part of this project and to be working with such incredible people. Thank you. I think, I think we'll take about maybe one more question. Uh, Steven. Yes, uh, yes. I'm coming, I'm coming. I will say, I will say. I got a lot of boys I can use this too. All right. Love you, Steve. I don't know if this works. This no man on. Oh, <laughs> good job, Julian. I know. One job. One Hello. Job. Okay. <laughs> so I want to ask each of you really quickly. Uh, what was your favorite scene to do, and why? Boom. My only scene. <laughs> <laughs> so my my favorite scene to film. Okay, that's that's a tough one. I gotta say it was probably the library sequence with Shu and Marin because we were starting late. Shu went to the wrong building. <laughs> Hold on. It, get, it gets better. It gets better. So we're already about an hour and a half of a four hour shoot behind schedule. It's a three page scene. It's like one of the biggest dialogue sequences in the film. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, okay, gotta, gotta stay calm. Shu shows up, we do it in 55 minutes. So that, that scene was probably my favorite to film because it was that moment that I realized we have a good cast. Gray stole my answer, I can't lie. Um, I was also going to say the, the library scene. Um, it was just really the first time where uh, and I, I said this to Gray afterward, and I was like, Gray, I think we got something on our hands here. Um, just because the, the acting performances from Shu and Marin that day were so great. Um, Andrew on camera did a great job of, of framing the shots. Um, and also just, you know, I had the, the headphones on for audio, so I heard their dialogue, and it was, it was so great. And um, yeah, I would say the library scene was, was my favorite as well. Uh, it was just a, a, a great night, great night. I had a lot of fun in that hallway scene, the first one, um, where we got to use some really, really cool stuff that the school has. Um, so we have a dolly. So if you're not, if you guys aren't production people, basically it's a cart that you strap a camera onto. So it was me and Jack, um, who wasn't able to be here with us tonight, but was a, such a big help on the film. He was really my right hand guy. We figured out all of our shots and everything. So big shout out to him. But he was pulling the dolly. I was sitting on it, and it's, I have a video of it. I think it's up on my Instagram page. Um, but it was just such a fun opportunity to work with some new technology and push boundaries. So I had a lot of fun doing that. I would say my only scene, but that's a lie, real quick. Um, I would say the photo shoot that Shu and I did, that was a lot of fun because you never see us the whole movie. But in that moment, I have to be in an intimate relationship. And... <laughs> I didn't know what to do, but besides be intimate. So I was like, hey, you want to know how I tore both my butt cheek muscles at the same time? <laughs> and uh, it kind of just went in from there. And so that, that was probably the best moment right there. That's as intimate as we got. Wow, I wish I was there to see. <laughs> but, uh, 
personally, Dave Bryan. Thank you, Henry Wallace. That's my friend. Uh, but um, yeah, my favorite scene. Wow. Uh, so that I don't know. I wanted to see the scene, the one where I wasn't looking goofy or dirty, but um, it was the, the one where like where he yelled at me. That one. But that was a, that was one of my hardest scenes to do. But the scene I had the most fun doing was potentially, ooh, uh, I'd probably say the the first one, the first one that I was in where I came in and I had my little book and I tried to say some things to the girls inside the hallway and none of them heard me. There was a lot of takes for that. And the fact is that the one where I said I smell bad, I did not know he was going to pick that one. That was a surprise <laughs> to me too. That's the first time I've seen it. So, I know, I know. But it was... For me, like I said, it's the first time I actually got to be, you know, filming. So like, like I said, when I came up to audition, I was completely spontaneous. I had no idea what I was getting into. So now all of a sudden I have to get in the mindset. Because I know I'm going to do improv. I have to script and memorize and read lines. And that's a lot of work. I'm not an English major. So I, she's an English major. She's wanted to brag. She whispered that in my ear. Um, but that scene was fun for me because I actually... I don't know. Sure, it's fun. I actually had to learn how to memorize, actually think about what I was doing as I was acting. But I love that Greg kind of did a little bit of a both of, uh, you know what, here's some things you need to say, but you can feel free to get, you know, improvise a little bit, help you really to get into the character. Which was pretty easy because it was kind of a bit of an exaggerated version of me. Just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm that cool and nerdy all the time. But um, yeah, that was probably one of my favorite scenes to do. And I did also get to ride the dolly. That was also good. But like I said, that was kind of, like I said, for me, this was like the opening of a new, I don't know, new frontier for me. Because like I said, I've never done something like this before. So it was, thank you for the opportunity. OK, uh, let's see. My favorite scene was probably the hallway scene, the one where I'm wearing like the white skirt and the blue sweater. I love that scene so freaking much. I think you're talking about this one. Oh, yeah. He had us hug afterwards. Apparently, I was getting too mean. <laughs> I didn't think it was that deep, but. <laughs> Gray said it would be good for press, so. Anyway, we're friends, though. It's chill. Uh, when I was insulting him, I just looked through him. Oh, but big shout out to Danny. Danny made me look good. Danny, Danny made me look good, so thank you. Shout out to Danny. Oh, I had to stop. <laughs> yeah, like, it's okay. Um, but I love that scene. I think each take we took, uh, I probably insulted for like five to seven minutes straight. Uh, each take was different. I never really reused an insult. I just knew I had to bring up uh, that Jordan's gone, he took it from us, and why couldn't it have been him? So I got to be really creative. Uh, what was it? But I do want to mention real quick, my favorite insult that didn't make it into the movie because Grace started laughing was I said you could shave his head and uh, call him Mr. Clean, he'd still be dirty. <laughs> and you laughed, so it's not there. But no, it was that and then like a few other really fun, mean ones. I liked Cavernous Hole for you. I thought that was funny too. Didn't make it either, but all good. I know it was a good bet. Anyway, but yeah, hallway scene, for sure. Thank you. For sure. I'm also gonna agree that hallway scene was very fun. <laughs> Um, for part for part two of the, the hallway scene, mostly the one where she was insulting him, because I was just kind of getting to lurk around behind the cameras, and I was just like, ooh, ooh, I get to watch this all go down, and then hop in and be like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> so I thought that was really fun. Um, it was just like a super fun like atmosphere on set that day. We had a lot of really amazing extras that helped make that possible. Um, it was just super fun, even though the subject matter was, was very tense, and obviously in, in the movie it's like, it's very intense. Just know we were having a really great time on set. Like, it was late at night, we were tired. Um, I think I had on a face of makeup that I had had on since maybe 6 a.m., and it was like 9 p.m. or something like that. We were all tired and just having a good time. So, um, those two are friends, by the way. They don't actually hate each other. But, yeah, that was, that was my favorite, for sure. <laughs> Confrontation scene. Um, I have to, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, three times in a row, I'm gonna have to say that confrontation between Roy and Amber. Um, 
that was just so much fun and it was incredible being able to work with Marin and Shu and the crew and all of the extras. It was just fantastic. And I know I definitely did not look like it, but I was just having a blast. Um, there was a day where I was very frustrated because she was being very creative with her insults. Um, there was a day where I had to stop myself from laughing, so I hit like so I hit the wall behind me, but that was like an electrical thing, and the extras got scared. So I'm sorry about that. But that was a lot of fun just being around so many people helping working on this. Um, when the um, extras were roasting Roy. I was standing next to the camera with a smile on my face. It was fantastic. Um, honorable mention goes to the first scene between Nate and I, just because I broke characters so many times. Because Nate was just being so funny. Thank you. All right, I think that'll wrap it up for our evening. I think it's... <laughs> My name's Gray. My name's Nick. Andrew. Andrew Gray. Nathaniel Brown, call me the So the issue. Marin Decker. Andrew McNichol. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the cast and crew of Light of the Passing Train.